Happy Floss Tube Friday, friends. My name is Carrie. This is Tiger Lily Designs. Welcome to Floss Tube episode number 92. Yay! Welcome. It's February 2nd, 2024. I hope you're having a great Friday. I have my table full of the goodies as I like to do. I'm here to give you a little bit of stitchy update. So if you're finding my channel for the first time, welcome. My channel is about stitching and knitting and quilting and basically making with everything in the world of fiber and textiles and floss and fabric and fun really. Um, and I hope you stick around. Today is floss too. So it's a lot of cross stitch. There's a little bit of knitting. Yeah. And a little bit of birthday haul. That's fun. A little bit of sharing. So let's run through my table of contents. I've got uh, two cross stitch whips, one cross stitch finish since last time I was here. We're going to talk about the meeting along that officially starts on Monday. Super excited. Um, like again, this week was my birthday week, so I've had my birthday start. That's super fun, as well as some birthday haul and gifts that's coming. Um, we're going to talk about do a little bit um, of a little Tiger Lily Shop update at the end. And that's where we are. Yay! Fantastic. Let's dive in. Want to? Okay, so first, did you see that this week, Monday, Tuesday, sometime, I dropped my whip parade? Or, as I affectionately like to call it, my whip feature length movie, because... Who doesn't love a two-hour movie? What? I mean, I don't even have that many whips. But I guess I talk a lot. Hopefully you love it. Um, I will link down below over in the corner or something. The whip parade, like I said, just dropped this week. Showing you all the whips as they were at the moment. Um, what I thought was interesting, and you guys are loving it, is the whip categories I did. I did, I almost did it again. There's five categories. Um, five categories. One of them was my less than five days. It's my favorite category. Let's just be honest with you. My favorite category of all my categories, well, yeah, is my less than five days. And that's the one, in case you haven't seen it, is the one where um, I look at the whip, I open it up. This is my project library right here. And I opened up the whip and I was like, oh my gosh, why isn't this done? It can be done in less than five days. That's how got something got put in that category. Pretty exciting, huh? So I have my second finish from that category and I'm pretty stoked about it. I've already had one. I talked during my whip parade. My, my goal is to finish one per, oh my gosh, five days category per month and then they'd all be done. That's pretty awesome sauce. And it's this month I did two. Woohoo. One I showed you in the whip parade because it was actually on the list. Anyway, whip parade. Then there's smalls, which can be ornaments, collection of ornaments, pillows, all the things, less than 100 by 100, medium, and then my big girls. My big girls, the two numbers have to add up to 300. So there's a lot that some might categorize like a 150 by 150. Some might categorize that as a medium. But I go ahead and give myself extra confidence and I put it in the big girl. Now, there's also big girls that are like 300 by 300. Yeah, mm -hmm. those are big girls. Those are big, big girls. Anyway, you want to see my finish? Ah, I want to show it to you. Okay, so this is one. I have to grab my little, my calendar system is working fantastically. So I'm going to show you that too. But this is the finish from last week. Now, this is something I, mm -hmm. this is. This is Blackbird Designs. It's part of the Loose Feathers series for the birds, number two. Mm -hmm. So cute. I love a good bird bigger than the house. Let's just be honest. So I actually um, finished this one and ironed it for you. Oh, look at me. Because I did have plans to fully finish it. But those plans have not come to fruition yet. So hopefully... I'm going to go down to my, do you, have a, do you have a finishing tub? I might have like two or three of them. It's one of those things where I'm out thrifting and treasure hunting as I like to do. And I find something that, oh, this would be good for a finish. And then I buy it, right? Because it's, you know, inexpensive or I think it's perfect or it's unique, whatever. I also love a good Hobby Lobby finish. Um, I do love to finish all my things myself, whether it's framed or on something. And so I do have three tubs of items that I have procured that I think would be perfect for finishing. So I'm hoping that down, that in one of those tubs is a perfect square something magical that this will go on. So I stitched this on, this was stitched with all the called for colors, which if you know, that is very unlike me, but this was gifted to me that way from my daughter. And so I did that. I did do it, stitched it on 40 count, um, needle on flax, dirty teacup. 
So I love it. I love it. Like I said, um, it's about a five by five, five and a half by five and a half. So hopefully down in my mystery tub, there is something that this will be. This would be such a cute little shelf setter. Now I could make it a pillow. It would be a bigger pillow than what I want, but I'm thinking some kind of shelf setter or a little hang on the wall in my studio. I love mixing and matching like big artwork. I have to do a studio tour one day as I look around and you guys are watching me look around on my walls in my studio. Not a lot of white walls. I like to cover all the spaces. And so I have big artwork and little artwork and little tiny quilts and all the things. So this could be something. Anyway, it's not finished yet. One day it will be. But I finished stitching it this week. So that is my finished stitching for the week. Yay. So that is my second, second, not double two, one, two, um, finished for 2024. So that's pretty exciting. Neither one I have fully finished, but yeah, that's, that's a problem for future me. I am going to do this as a giveaway. So if you want to be, I'd love to just pop this in an envelope and send it on your way. If birds bigger than houses speak to you too. Ah. So let's use the word bird. Use the word bird in your comment because that's what I love about it. That's what Lily loves about it is the bird bigger than the house. So use the word bird in your comment down below. Make sure that you like the video, subscribe to the channel and use the word bird. And next week I will pull the winner. I don't, I don't do um, giveaways every week, but you know, if I have a reason to, let's do it. So fun. Uh, that's something exciting for you. Let's dig into whip number one. Nope. Number one is in this. It's got my project library card in it. So it shows you, this is Jane Hopkins. So the designer is Hands Across the Sea. Started this in July of 2023. This is Sarah, my friend, handmade by Sarah W. Um, this is her birthday start from July this year. I'm stitching this on 16 count and picture this plus the blue. Now, um, if you're new here, I stitch on both Ada and Lennon. So I'm a double dipper. I don't know. I like them both. I like them both. So I opened this up. Now, what I did this week, I had showed you guys, I worked on this. Maybe. No, mm -mm, I pulled this out. So I did do some bobbinating. So this was a beautiful, one of those winders by, by R&R. &R. Oh, pickles. I'll link them down below. Um, beautiful winder. And then I throw them on. These are Adam Hart cross stitch bobbins. These are her thread bobbins. She has a couple different products, but this is her thread bobbins. And the reason that I, I'm, not, this is all DMC. I'm using the call for DMC. And the reason I, I wanted to try, this is my first time trying these out and I kind of dig on them is rather than, so this is a traditional bobbin, right? Where you wind it around. It gets a little kinky. Wasn't really something that affected me, but what did affect me is pulling the six strands off and then you have like four extra strands. What are you going to do with that? Da, 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 da. So, but the thing, unique thing about these is it looks like a bobbin, right? But it's a floss drop. So that's super fun. That does get a little kinky. I mean, you're wrapping it around, but you can pull off one strand or pull off two strands. DMC, it's all the same thing. So you don't have to worry about like color variegation. So you pull your strands off and then you wrap it back around, stick it in the handy dandy uh, project keeper for bobbins. This is what I like to, on big, big projects that have lots of colors where the floss ring is going to be like a hot, you know, tangled mess. I, I really like keeping a, I just, organization is kind of my jam. So this is something that Sarah makes for us every time we do a birthday start or every time we stitch together. So this was, she made me one of those. Let's look at the stitching, shall we? Now, in case you're not familiar with this chart, I thought I showed it to you last week, but no, I showed it to you during the whip parade. So that's fun. So this is Jane Hopkins. So I pulled her out. That's the great thing about whip parades is I feel like I get to see and I'm like, get inspired by things I haven't touched in a while. I mean, it, it's probably been months since I pulled this beauty out and both I got inspired by a watching Sarah's whip parade. And she is like way far along on this because she has goals to finish the whole daggone thing before her birthday this July. So mm, I'm cheering you on girlfriend. Did I just lose a needle? Maybe. Um, so originally I was starting this doing a page, but then I moved on. <laughs> I, I, I'm doing like a combo page color completer. So this is my progress right now. I wish I had it before a picture, but I don't. But it was basically like the rose and a little bit of the green. So I definitely did like all this green. I've come down and I started to do the vase, which is one of my favorite parts because it's like all the different colors. It's super psychedelic. And then there's another rose here. I'm kind of like super excited about the flowers. And so I haven't quite decided. Originally during my whip parade, I said, no way, no how. I'm only stitching the center. 
We'll see. We'll see. I'm definitely going to stitch the center first and I'm going to evaluate at the time I'm done with that to see whether I'm going to go ahead and do all the accoutrement that's around it and the border and all the things or whether I'm going to be happy and content with just the flower motif in the center, put it in a circle frame and call it done. But so I'm really loving this little micro calendar that I just keep in my always comes with me bag. Of course, I have one of my fancy my fabulous happiness is handmade pens tiger lily pens from the oven but this is this is my january i know it's not pretty like the 12 days of christmas well, 12 days of christmas like the um book of days but it's tiny and it's perfect because then i can i won't get lost when i'm carrying all the other stuff so this is where i've got so you can see let's see where when was i here i was here Last time I was here, this Friday, so I worked on the Blackbird night, and so I finished that one. So when it went into my finish column, that's exciting. And then, so I started Jane. I picked up Jane on Monday and Tuesday and a little bit of Sunday. So I only worked on her for three days. And then I had my birthday start. Um, so, but I'm, I am, so I've got whips and knitting and starts and finishes. And then some blank time. We talked about that last week. Yeah. So I'm pretty excited about it. So far, one month down. Yay. And I can know what I did and all the things. So I started my LFA beanie and I'm not done with that yet, but hopefully soon. And so I only worked three days on here and I feel like I got a lot. A, because I also bobbinated or wound, took off the skeins and put them on the drops. That takes some time. And so I did a lot of colors. For, so that's my my progress on Jane. She only got three days, but she's probably going to be put away for right now because that's about the most I need to do. And then I get bored and I need to squirrel a little bit. And I've got so many other things going on. So let's talk about what else we have going on. So that is my update on Jane. I'm happy with the progress, but she's going to go away, I think. And then my next is my new start. Now my new start, yay! We've been talking about it. I'm going to say for I don't know. Last week, I think, is the last, first time I talked about it on Flosstube. I feel like I've been talking about it forever, but, but it's only been like a week or two if you include Instagram. But anyway, it is my birthday start. It was my birthday on Wednesday, January 31st. Yay. Welcome. This is what 48 looks like. I'm pretty excited about it. Mm -hmm. I'm not one of those people. I'm one of those people that loves a birthday. Love having a birthday. Love celebrating other people's birthdays. Like, age is just a number of people and... I'm not scared of it. Like, bring it on. Let's do it. Okay, so anyway, my birthday start. I know there's so many. I've been trying to make a graphic. I'm going to make a list. So if you're joining me, make sure that you DM me or message me or because I'm making this a super friend, stitchy friends with the best. Stitching with friends is the best. I'm making a little graphic for all my friends that are stitching the and with me. So there is a hashtag. It's Tiger Lily B Day Sal on Instagram. If you're on Instagram, you want to see the chart? Sure you do. This is my sister's samplers. Ann Richardson, age nine. Love it. If you know anything about me, you know, the first thing I saw was all that pink. And of course I had to do it. So I picked this one for my birthday start. The chart is getting, I know is, is somebody, as a lot of people's Achilles heels, it is hard to find. Um, I did try, just went to Etsy to see if Christine at Hollis Hand had gotten her update. The shipping gremlins had like taken a box of charts from the sisters going to Christine, had taken them hostage and just put them in a vortex. Oh, the shipping vortex. So, but I do believe that they have a workaround in, in effect. So message Christine. I know there are a couple other, just checked this morning. I can't guarantee it's still going to be there, but there's a couple, at least one other Etsy shop who actually has paper copies ready to go. But I know Christine is expecting a box as long as the vortex didn't eat it but I'm afraid it might have because she still hasn't updated her shop to say that they're in stock. And I know she was getting quite a, quite a number that she should have been able to. Anyway, we're, we're working. We're, we're, don't worry. You're going to have plenty of time. We're going to find the chart. I know Vicki, then these are all, this is like a, to do this, you don't, you do it however you want. They charted it in Vicki Clayton silks and gave a DMC conversion. But Vicki Clayton, if you've never tried her silks, they're gorgeous. So I have mine in this cute little box. This is not the um, Hobby Lobby box that I have my other Vicki Clayton's in. This is actually a clover clip. So if you, sorry, that was over there chasing rabbits in his dreams, if you hear that. Um, so this is, if you buy clover, if you're a quilter and you get clover clips, 
then this is the box that they come in. And of course I save anything like that. And I'm like, oh, this will be good for something. And it is, it's perfect. It's a little big, but it gets the job done. So I went ahead and I copied. So these are the seven colors and the little stuff. And I double stick taped it on there. And those are my, those are my seven threads. So fun. So Vicky, like I was saying, Vicky Clayton has a beautiful, and she discounted it for the South because she wants so many people. She wants to, to make it a little bit more friendly for people to join the South. Anyway, so I started this on my birthday. I started it my birthday night. I was gonna do like a Stitch With Me Live or a Zoom call. You know, we had talked about it, but surprise, surprise, I actually got whisked away for a day of antiquing. So my word of the day, word of my, word of the year is to be intentional with my time. And so I said, I can stitch tonight. I did miss stitching and starting with you and my friends, but I was intentional and I went and I, I enjoyed living my mind, living my moment. So let me show you how far I got. So this is two nights of stitching. I'm trying to, what can I use to hold up? I can't show you the bag I have because that's part of my birthday haul. So I don't want to mix and mingle categories. You know what I'm saying? So I am again using the Vicki Clayton silks. I did not iron this. I just stitched on it last night. Let me smoosh it out for you. But look, now if you know, usually I'm a center starter. And oh my gosh, the temptation I had to start with that gorgeous flower right in the middle, that was for reals. But I decided I was going to be good and get the alphabets done. The alphabets aren't my favorite, especially an alphabet where every letter is a different color. Yes, yes. Which is beautiful. I love the way it's turning out. But stitching and changing threads every letter, so after every 12 stitches or so, it's not my favorite, but I love the way it's coming out. No, I'm stitching mine on, we talked about my fabric choices. I'm stitching mine on 36 count Baby Sheep by Xju Designs. So you can see it's a tiny little sampler. I'm super excited about it. So this is as wide as it's going to be. It's almost a square, so it's going to be about this. It's going to be adorable. So, um... In case you want to look closely, go ahead. I have no problem. I, I'm a team fudge. Yay. So I'm fudging right along. Fudging right along. You know, I, I, I don't think I get too far in a chart before I'm fudging something. And so I'm going to go ahead and tell you what I did in case you're looking at it and be like, it doesn't look like mine. Let me tell you why. One, so I started with the O. I did a um, the start. And then I went to the N. Okay. So step one. When you look at these colors, what do you see? You see, oh my gosh, red, phlox, see something, see these words? And so I just looked down, the first one I came to was this one that said sea whack. Well, my eyes didn't look any further down. And so I was like, oh, sea whack. So I opened it up, I found the first sea whack I found, and that would became my N. And then a couple letters later, I'm referencing the color and I'm like, huh. So the two, there's two sea wax. They're basically, so there's three shades of green, a light chartreuse green, a little bit darker, kind of more like mossy color green. And then there's more of like a dark evergreeny green, almost black kind of. So those are the three greens. The two sea wax are green chartreuse and green moss. That's what I'm going to call them. Well, I mixed them up. Sure did, right out of the chute. And I'm okay with that. I was like, well, that's okay. Let's just let's just commit to that error right off, off the bat. So that is the chartreuse green. It was supposed to be the other green. So I went ahead and I'm the chartreuse green wasn't used in any of the capital letters, but so I made my H the chart. Anyway, changing it. And then fudge number two. Ready for it, friends? <laughs> Fudge number two. Okay, so there's different ways you can read a chart by look or pick the color by looking at the chart and looking at the symbols, right? That would be one way to do it. Might be the logical way to do it. But when there's only seven colors, and as long as I'd already like I've mastered this green problem. So as long as I figured out the green situation, I felt pretty good, like looking at rather than having to read the Rather than reading the chart for the colors, I just looked at the pretty, pretty color picture. So I went along, and so I get to the G. Well, it's red. That's red, okay? There's one red. So I said it's red. And I'm looking at my chart, and I'm like, well, pickles. 
it's charted in pink. The color is charted in pink. Now, doesn't matter. <laughs> Mine looks like the stitch versus the chart. So six and a half dozen. Make it your own team fudge. There's no rules. There's no cross test place. Nobody's going to get you. One of the things I noticed as I was stitching this and I about fell out of my chair because if you've been around for a while, you know, I like to change things up. A, I like to make them personal. B, I like to make them correct because I mean, bless her heart, bless her heart. Nine years old. She was just bless her heart. Learn, learn her alphabets. It's a struggle. The struggle's real. On Mary Morgan's, you know, it was back in the day where we were leaving letters out and I, I, I added letters to my alphabet. I, I was not going to have that. Well, I'm stitching along and I'm like, what? And I didn't realize it. I mean, I was blindly stitching and not really thinking. Stitching and not thinking. You, you can do both, right? And I was like, why are there two N's and two M's? And that's it. And then there's two A's. Bless her heart. Bless her heart. And then, of course, we all know, like, we got the lowercase, a, blah, 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 and then we ran out of room, so we're just going to throw the Y and the Z up there. So this is one where if I had realized it and if I really evaluated the chart, I might have changed it. I might have taken out the duplicate three letters and the cutie. Um, but I didn't, and so we're just going with it because, I, again, team fudge, not team frog. So that is where I am right now. Again, I hope you're, if you're stitching on it, are you loving it? It is so fun. Now I am going to go ahead. Those are all my stitch chains. Yes. That is my two whips and my start slash finish, all the things. So let's tangent into a little birthday situation because I want to show you how I'm managing my Anne needles. Okay, so I'm going to show you one of my birthday gifts from my sweet friend, Shelly, Antique Needleworkers. She sent me this ginormous box full of stuff and I was just like so spoiled so but one of them I'm using for Anne and I want to show you how I'm using it so that's why we're going to stay in that's why it's going to stay in this segment of the show so this is the sweet I don't know what she calls this this is a project roll bag side it's perfect is and it's going to be great for a bigger project but I had to use it from I mean it's do you see the pink I had to use it for Anne. So first of all, let's just ooh, let's just oogle and Google over this beautiful swan she stitched. Here's all this meaning behind swans and friendship and things, and it's beautiful. And and it's what is so exciting is she told me that she used. It's called Linda's Paintbrush, which was a custom Tiger Lily Keeper Club custom floss from the July Club pinks it was all the pinks and she's like and I use that one for it because I was like it's a beautiful variegated pink she goes yeah it's yours it's one of your custom colors ah, I love it I love it I love it okay beautiful and then you open it up and this is so it's got a vinyl pocket down here which would be great so this will definitely be perfect for a small um either an accessory to a bigger project a big girl or as a separate like project bag on its own for a smaller one like one of these black birdie charts pretty sure i should have tested before i did it live on camera no no testing needed that would be perfect for one of those size charts throw your fabric in there all the things right okay or like i said when you have big girls and there's 37 colors and you got to keep everything all wrangled and stuff it's perfect but i had to use it for Anne because it was gorgeous but why I wanted, wanted to show you is, remember I said needles? Okay, so what I decided to do, seven colors, right, in here, and we're switching colors every 10 stitches. Well, girlfriend's not going to de-thread and re-thread one needle per project. That's just not gonna happen. Um, it's usually what I do. I am 98% of the time, there's one needle per project. I mean, like, I don't know why. We spend all this money on charts and floss and fabric and things shouldn't be so stingy with my needles, which is what I decided, well, I'm not going to be stingy and I'm not going to have to change a needle every 12 stitches because that's just going to make me angry or not enjoyable. Not angry. That's strong. That's too strong. It's not going to be super enjoyable. So instead, I wasn't stingy with my needles, got a whole packet of my, my favorite needles, which is the white, white eye, Pony black size 28 because I'm stitching this on 36 count. So I wanted the 28 needle. Got a whole pack. Now there's 
five or six per pack. So I did have to get one extra one, but do you see them? So there's seven needles. They all have the white eyes. See the white eyes. Okay. Did I lose one? No, it's there. It just, there's, I was going to say, hold on. I only see six whites. One, two, three, four, seven needles. So what I did is I went and I cut one strand. So this is six, Vicki Clayton's is six, stand, six stranded silk. I cut one strand of each color, you know, 15 inches or so. I like to make my silks a little shorter. 15 inches is my normal thread length. Um, but with the silks, I make them so that way, because I feel like they shred a little bit as you, they pull through the fabric so many times. Anyway, so I did a little bit of shorter length, grabbed one of my extra. This is the Adam Heart Floss Hearts. And I put the one strand of each color on here. And that way, when I was, and then I, then I loaded each of the seven, each one of the needles up with one strand of the color. So that way, as I'm going, or as I was going, I would stitch with the red. And I would, you know, you'd have to close it off and cut it off, but then I just put it back on that, on that felt ribbon and then grab the next one, the wrong one, but we already talked about that. And then, then it's a much more enjoyable stitch to not have to rethread your needle. So if you're doing this, on, doing this one or doing something like this with multiple color changes, I mean, 20 colors, that's too many. In my, I mean, you do you, but seven colors. I felt like that was the perfect way to try out this system. And I'm kind of really digging on it. So, um, I love that you can see they're all loaded up. This was just for me stitching last night. They're not all, obviously I finished a color cause there's one empty one. I don't know which one it is. I'll figure it out when I start stitching tonight. So that's what I did with that. And so it really, really is helping me. I feel like it makes me go a little faster cause you don't have to, with the color change, you don't have to rethread and dethread and you don't lose. Sometimes when you get down to like six inches, you're like, oh, I have to rethread it again. I'm just going to toss it. Wow. This way you don't. Silks, you know, anyway. So, but that was, that's my system and my gift. So yay. Did you notice my wardrobe change? Yes. Okay. Ready? Get prepared to fall out of your chair because I fell out of my chair slash cried slash scream slash like, oh my gosh, no, you didn't. So, my sweet friend Shelly, antique needle workers, spoiled me rotten. I got this birthday box and it came the day before my birthday. And she's like, I said, I'm going to wait until no, my birthday. She goes, no, you're not. We're going to FaceTime right now. You're going to do it right now. I've been waiting. And I said, like, okay, let's do that. So I opened it up. First of all, gorgeous box. I should have brought it over. Beautiful. Can't wait to like put all my secret, favorite, favorite things. It's one of those type of memory boxes. It's gorgeous. Just the box. I open it up. And it's full of stuff, all wrapped in tissue. So we open up one thing at a time. This was on top. And I said, like, there can't be more. This. So if you have been with me for a while, back, and she, this is what her note, she had, adorable, I should have pulled them out. Well, it, anyway, she gave me little notes on each of my things. And, and it's so super sweet, and I loved it all. And so... September, October. I went thrifting with my mom when we were down at Clemson, winning, going to visit and seeing. Anyway, I'm thrifting. It's up there somewhere. <laughs> Sorry. I look up there like you can see, but up, up on the shelf is, it's right here. I'm touching it. Is a, is a quilt that I thrifted for like, that I sourced. That it, it was, anyway, my, and my said, and I told everybody on the channel, I said, I want to make a quilt coat. I've never made one. Garments aren't really my thing. I'm more like quilts and blankets and table runners and pillows and that kind of stuff. Never made a garment. Well, I mean, I have, but it's not my favorite, but I wanted to make a quilt coat because I've been seeing on Instagram all the quilt coats. And she, and so Shelly said that when she heard me say that in September, she said like, challenge accepted like she was ready for it and so she went through now she saves the stitches she's got a beautiful if you haven't watched her grist mill tour I don't remember if she shows you her quilts save wall but she's got she's a beautiful collection as all of us do if we repurpose or recycle and listen I have quite a collection of save the stitches. So I save the stitches and Shelly saves the quilts and gives them new life and repurposes them into all kinds of gorgeous things. Um, I'm the lucky recipient of when some of her, like my needle book and my, in my go, my go bag is one of Shelly's needle books. There's a little pouch, a sewing pouch. It's what, 
Anyway, gorgeous. So she has quite a collection of saved quilts. So she went to her collection of quilts. Yes. This used to be a quilt. And I, I can't back up the camera enough because, A, I would show you too much. Of Down below, right below my library, are bolts and bolts of fabric that my, may or may not, really they may, um, be the April and the Advent keeper fabric. So I can't be showing you that. So I can't back up any further. Can you see? Oh my gosh. This is the most, okay. So if you're going to market and you see a lady in a quilt coat, it's me. This is going to be like my uniform. This is going to be my retreat uniform. I can't be going like, I'm going to be the one at Stitch Florida in July wearing a quilt coat. That's just all there is to it. Better crank up the air conditioning because this is gorgeous. First, it's just the, I was floored. I am like, it's, it's, it's cherished. This is going to be like one of my most cherished pieces in ever, ever. So let me take it off and show you a little bit more. Since, but just look, I mean, I love, it was a quilt in its first life. That so is my language that it, upcycling is my love language. Let's just be honest. I'm, maybe I'm weird, but Shelly understands me. We talk about being twins all the time. So I know she understands me and she knew and she, I mean, just, and she's not a big garment sewer either. So she, she was explaining to me that she's had to like kind of figure it out, make up, draft the pattern. I'm sorry, what? She drafted the pattern, you know, kind of just made it up, lined it with beautiful, oh, it's just stunning breathtakingly stunning, priceless, wearable art. That's what it is. It's, it's wearable art and I am so honored. Oh, I just want to stare at it all the time. I am going to get like a, it's going to hang on the wall in my studio so I can look at it all the time when I'm not wearing it. But I'm one of those, I'm going to use it. So like I said, if you're at market, I'm going to be, I'm going to be at market buying. Um, if you see me, come say hi. Or at a retreat. I do have three or four retreats this year. And this will be my uniform in case you're looking for me. Okay. So that floored. Beautiful. Aren't friends the best? Um, so And the beautiful swan. The swan case I just showed you. Okay. Inside the swan case was... It, it's, it had a beautiful pair of scissors. They're already in my go bag, as I call it. So, and then a beautiful seam ripper that has my name on it. Okay, beautiful. Cause sometimes when you're quilting and sewing keepers, you do have to frog. I don't use a seam ripper for cross stitching frogging. I use it for quilting. And yes, I do. I can't, I don't fudge that. <laughs> you don't fudge a quilt. At least I don't. So beautiful, beautiful seam ripper. But are you ready for it? I fell out of my chair. Again, I'm already on the floor. I mean, the... it's too much. I just remember, I just, I told you guys that I was new to, to linen. I'm an Ada stitcher and have been for years um, in hand sewing methods. So no Q-snaps, no hoops, no nothing. Learn linen. I'm not going to tell you that story again, but I, so I'm have a small, very small. I have, you know, two, four inch, which are my favorite for the crook, right? Um, two hoops. I got a six inch princess from Shelly from, for Christmas. So I've just, you know, slowly been creating, procuring, adding to my hoop collection. So I have a princess, a hold tight, a couple, I'm looking over, I got a one or two of the metal ones out of mana. Have you watched Shelly's hoop video? I'll link it down below. It, I mean, all the things I don't have. So as many of you, I'm sure, I had a um, eBay watch list set up for Queens. It was, it's like the dream. It's like the, yeah, but I'm not, ugh, I can't, I just can't. 
in my swam case was my very first and probably my only queen. My sweet, sweet friend Shelly gave me my first queen. It's a five inch queen. I use it for my birthday. I'm gonna use it for everything. Now it's in my like cherished bags that come with me, but it's beautiful. Like you don't even know. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now you don't need a queen. I used a Nurge. I've used, they don't have to have antique ones either. You can use a, a spring tension, like, but it's just, it's just beautiful. It feels so nice. It feels so nice in your hand. You can just feel, and it's kind of like, we, we kind of geek out on it. Maybe, we're, maybe we're kind of weird. And maybe I shouldn't say we, maybe she only just not want me telling you guys that we're, we're but we kind of like feel, I mean, I don't know how, 100, I have to watch your hoop video again, 100-ish, could be 80. Anyway, lots of people, the makers of generations ago were using this hoop, making things for their family, for their loved ones, probably making clothes, making, I mean, it was just, just the history. It's beautiful. And I love, I love, I love it so much. And I love that my sweet friend gave it to me. If that wasn't enough, here's a birthday stitch for you in case you want one. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at the pink rose. Now we have a Helen and Honey rose situation going. These are our two grandmothers. Um, and so we love a good pink rose. We do. And so it's, it's in a cute little box and it's on perforated paper and there's only 72 million back stitches but it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And so now it's going to live right there. And then two of her favorite books, a cooking book because she wanted to take me out dinner, but she couldn't. So I'm going to make my own dinner. And this is so fun. And then a heirloom rooms. This is one of her favorite. This I watched this girl on HGTV. So fun. So I can't wait. Spoiled. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I got a couple other birthday cards in the mail. This is from my sweet friend, Christy. Hey, cuz. This was so fun to get. Of course. Love every color about that. And then my sweet friend, Lucille, sent me something. Look at this handmade card. I love it. I'm going to add it to my board. I have a board over there that's right above my desk. But I keep all my cards that are sent to me and I just love it. And I, the handmade ones are even extra special. But she included in that these like drawer potpourri. I can't tell if it's lavender, but it's beautiful. It smells super yummy to throw away, you know, in your delicate drawer, right? And then if you know, if you've been around, you know how much cardinals are my favorite. So she found this beautiful cardinal mug. It's gorgeous. I love it. Thank you so much, Lucille. So I'm going to add that to my little cardinal collection. So, so this is going to be real quick, just because I feel like this is just a haul show, but there was some stitching in the beginning, right? So as I mentioned on my birthday, Patrick took me antiquing. So I live in Northern Virginia, like Mount Vernon area, Mount Vernon. And there's not a lot of antiques right here in, in the DC area. You have to drive out into the country. So we had to go out. It's a, it's a, you know, planned day. We went out to Emmitsburg, Maryland, Hagerstown, somewhere in Pennsylvania. Like we went to three different antique stores. We kind of just went and then we kept going and kept going. So we found three of them. I just want to show you something on my phone. Okay, first of all. I, I just couldn't resist. She She's pink and she's adorable. So, you know, even trash cans and sewing studios have to be pretty. I mean, yes, I have one of those functional big ones for all the stuff, but it's just pretty. So... <laughs> I'm a, I'm a goofball. That's okay. If anybody's going to understand me, it's going to be, it's going to be y'all. So as I mentioned, I'm a sucker for a state. So saving the stitches. So I did find, look at that beautiful dahlia flower. Oh, so I got a table linen that had three of those dahlia flowers. Yes. Those will be project capers one day. Oh my goodness. 
yes look at this southern bell i can't even first of all just the crochet edge hot pink <gasps> oh my okay so there's two of these these are like extra fabulous extra so those will be keepers one day oh there's some things in here i can't show you because it might be a gift for someone so i'm not gonna show you that i did i'm always searching because you never know you gotta make another liz matthews tree so i was able to find a reasonably priced flower frog so that's always fun and then last but not least this was actually the first thing i found now it looks like a quilt i mean it is a quilt it's a blanket but it's stitches instead of quilting it's stitches and hand quilting Ooh. now there are there's like this one area that is super torn up one area that is i don't know want to know what died on it but it's this beautiful oh, look at that beautiful quilt that's just stitches on stitches. Oh my gosh, but look at the people. Hold on, that might that might not be a good guy, but he's okay, guy. He's okay. He, he look a little worn, but there's girls and guys and flowers and motifs. I think it's like 72 by 90. It's a really, really nice. Now, it smells like grandma's attic and not grandma's attic in a good way so this is now going to take a nice soaking bath for days maybe weeks to a see if i can get some of the stains out slash colors out um that you don't want and then be the smell so we shall see um what becomes of this but this was such a good find i couldn't resist i couldn't resist now this won't be keepers this will probably be project bags maybe project bags for retreat friends only i don't know i haven't decided it's gonna be a super special one that's for sure so that was my haul my birthday haul not too bad i was looking for really if you go looking for something you're not gonna find that that's just all there is to it so what i was looking for i did not find and that's okay that's okay um but let me, ch let me check my list what else we're gonna, we're gonna talk about the beating along oh my goodness okay i can't forget so as we were in the car for two hours, I did get some more work done on my beanie. Beanie number, I don't know. Well, I don't know how many, but basically it's my, I'm, this is my second test knit on my pattern. And it's, it's fantastic. It's going great. So I got another three, four inches. My goal is to hopefully finish this before Monday so I can have multiple. I, I got some, I got some in. I can car knit with the best of them obviously if I'm not driving, um, as long as it's no pattern, like you can't be having a look at a pattern, but on a beanie, you just go around and around and around and around, right? Okay. So if you're joining the beanie along, are you excited? Okay. The beanie along starts officially Monday the 5th. So Monday the 5th, last Monday, whatever day that was, 29th I shared the materials video so the materials video is up I know it's like 30 minutes long listen it's just welcome I, I talk a lot so but there's also a materials list it's in the pattern the pattern you can get from patreon so you join this is a free part on my patreon this is not a join and pay patreon this is a join and everything about the beanie along is going to be free on patreon um, so that's where, the, but that's where the pattern is. That's where we're going to do some of the things, but all of the videos that are going to be instructional videos are going to be on YouTube. So you need to kind of do both the Patreon free and the YouTube. So what, let me just give you a little bit of a structure. I am going to detail more. We're going to have a like Q and a session on, um, we're going to figure it so that way any questions are going to be answered with i've gotten some questions regarding yarn and needles and and all the things perfect love that um all these questions if i've answered a question i've thrown it into patreon because i want to have a one-stop shop for people to go and be like let me see if this question's already be asked like a fact fact an faq that's what you know anywho um, all in one place. That way you don't have to read through all the comments on a YouTube video or, or an Instagram post or all that. It's all in one place in the Patreon community, the free beating along area. Okay. So 
on Monday. So the materials list came out on this past Monday. And I told you about the needles that you needed and the yarn recommendations and all the accoutrement, right? That's all you need. But this is totally beginner friendly. Okay, I've gotten a lot of questions. A lot of people like, I downloaded the pattern and I don't understand any of the terms that you're talking oh, Listen, I didn't know. That it's like a whole other language. And I completely understand because I was you. I've been there. I totally know. <laughs> I know what you know, or I was you, I was you, where I knew nothing. I feel like I was in a foreign language and there were all these verb, all these words and vocab that I didn't know what it meant. And so if I don't know what it means, how am I going to be able to do it? Don't worry. I'm super excited. That's the whole reason for this beanie cow. Cow. Vocab number one, a cow. Knit along. We know sows. Stitch along. So a beanie cow. Knit along. Welcome. There's no quiz at the end. <laughs> but just in case you heard me call it instead of the beanie along, you hear me call it the beanie cow. That's the beanie knit along. Yay, isn't this fun? Okay. So on Monday, Monday the 5th, hopefully by Monday, you will be ready to go. You'll have your needles and your markers and your stitch, your needle, doodad, the covers and your three sets of needles, and most importantly, your yarn. But if not, you can always catch up. There's there's plenty of time. I've spaced it out. Remember, it's a four week project, um, February. So every Monday, we're gonna have a, a I've, I've kind of planned it out, but every Monday there's gonna be another bit and bob. Remember I told you I knit the whole thing in like eight days. So four weeks is totally doable, especially when you're starting at ground zero and you don't know anything about anything. It's gonna be fine. So this Monday, what are we doing? I just want to give you a little bit. I know this is floss too, but just in case you're joining and you're like, I want going to get excited for what's coming. Monday is when we're going to talk about casting on. So casting on is getting your yarn on the needles. And then we're going to do a knit stitch and we're going to gauge swatch. Those are the, those are all the vocab of what we're going to be talking about. There's probably, I haven't decided if I'm going to do one long video, separate it into three video, three separate videos for those, but that's what week one is. Week one is going to be about casting on, learning the knit stitch, and gauge swatching. Because that's one of my favorite, what do I think, it's a key component of being a successful knitter, I'm setting you up for success, hopefully for future, is gauge swatching. You can't skip this. I mean, lots of people do. And maybe when you're really, you, you've you learned your style, your tension, your, your knit, you've learned it all, you can skip it. But right now we're assuming you can't and we're gonna do it together and it's gonna be fabulous. So that's what Monday is this week. So like I said, there'll be three videos, one, I don't know, but all that information is going to drop on Monday. And then we're going to do a live um, Q&A, live Q&A, live knit with me, live situation. So if you are participating in the Beanie Along, I strongly encourage you to join the Patreon community. I am going to be posting another poll today, today in Patreon to discuss when and where you want to do the q and A. I I mean, all the, all the instructional videos are going to be on YouTube. Easily, you can access them access them. But if you have this particular Q&A question, I kind of feel like an interactive live, but we're going to talk about it. So there's a poll and we're going and I I don't want to just I want to do what you want me to do. I want to this is for you. So let's work together. So if you're a part of the beanie along, please please join the free Patreon membership and vote in the poll so I can figure out what we want to do for any questions, instruction that's needed as Dabo wanders around the studio for this Monday's information. And then we're going to do the same thing going forward. So every Monday, it's going to be like the next step. And then at the end of the month, you're going to have a, I can't put the, I mean, I could. let's see. Yeah, we're getting close, right? <laughs> okay. So First of all, isn't this yarn gorgeous? This is Legacy Fiber Arts. It's part of her Griswold Christmas tree. I don't know. Well, I mean, and I wore a coordinating shirt. Look at me. This is, it's gonna be so great. 
Are you excited? Okay, so that's the beanie lawn. I didn't want to forget. Okay, last but not least, um, I just wanted to give you a little bit of Tiger Lily Shop update. I'm not gonna take my hat off because, well, okay. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Hot mess. The Keeper Club went out on the 25th. That was before last week. I've got four more boxes that are in the vortex. <laughs> Oh, the shipping vortex. I'm pretty sure that two of them are being, that are actually, they might come out of the vortex in the next day or two, but there's still two more that, that aren't. And so there are a handful of boxes left still. Um, but I can't, I'm not going to, to do the extra sales until all the people that ordered and paid for the club actually received a box. <laughs> These shipping gremlins really put a damper on it. So hopefully you've seen there's lots of my friends that have shared their boxes out in the floss tube land. And I love it. I thank you guys so much for sharing um, and all the love you give the, the Keeper Club. I'm super excited. I loved this box. I'm, and it sounds like you guys did too, which is super great. Um, see, April right now is completely sold out, but it is all over the table right now and it is gorgeous as well as the advent um is already on the table as well because you can never start too early so in the meantime friends that's all i've got for you today so hope you have a happy friday great weekend ahead enjoying all the things happy quilting happy knitting happy making happy well all the things that you can do and until next time friends happy stitching <laughs>